It's corrupt to rattle watch. Fuck the blue line flag. All right. Apparently, I have to come out <coughs> and I have to tell people that watch my shorts or watch the full videos. Um, <coughs> sorry. That's yeah, some good weed. <coughs> I have to tell some of you people about Fourth Amendment violations and the authority that officers, law enforcement have with obtaining your identification if there has not been a fucking crime committed, people. Um, if there's no crime that they suspect you of committing, having committed, or are going to commit as a Fourth Amendment violation, if they obtain your ID, your identification, anything about who you are, um, by any means that is utilized by the Department of the Police or any law enforcement, if they record your image uh, on their body cam, if it was not in an interaction, now she could, now the video I'm speaking about is the video of the officer, the sergeant, who I caught parking in a parking lot and simply went up to see what she was doing. And if anyone watches the full video, you'll see that it was a very good interaction. Uh, I was very respectful, cordial, and so was she. I could barely hear her because she's so soft-spoken, but that's fine. Um, I walked away. I was simply standing there making sure that she leaves because they are not authorized to be sitting in a private parking lot. Uh, they do not have authorization to be sitting in that lot that they were sitting in. It's in my neighborhood. I know exactly where they're allowed to be and where they can't be. Second, she was not recording me during the interaction that she had with me, which was her, which would have been her right. She would have been a totally legal rights to video audio record me. Uh, when I came up to the vehicle. Absolutely. And I wouldn't have said a damn word about that because I couldn't have. That is expected to have that body cam rolling if she's feeling she needs to be that way. I didn't ask her for it to be on because I didn't really give a fuck. I was just simply there to see what she was doing. Okay. Second of all, uh, I was very respectful and cordial throughout that entire interaction. Most of my videos, I am not. And I'm not because they don't follow policy. They don't, they violate the law and they violate people's rights. If they do that, it's their call, and I'm I'm not going to play nice. Anyway, back to the story of the female officer, the sergeant. Uh, as she decided to pull away and pull out her body cam and angle it in my direction, which was, we were not, I was not detained. She was not suspecting me of a crime uh, of any way, and she had no legal jurisdiction, no legal right to have my identity. I am a free citizen of the United States of America, protected under the Constitution of America, and the Fourth Amendment protects my right to privacy. I have not committed a crime, people. So stop bashing me in the fucking comments talking about I was just there to get views and ag antagonize her and blah, blah, blah. Watch the full fucking video before you run your mouth. Second of all, something that a lot of people may not be aware about me, but I'll give some background about my life. I'm not ashamed of who I am. And I don't hide my fucking identity like some people like to comment that I just care about my identity. You're goddamn right when it comes to law enforcement and I haven't violated the law, I haven't committed a crime, they have no right to my identification of any kind. That don't just mean my plastic ID. That means my face, my fingerprints, none of that shit. My address, my phone number, my social security number, not a fucking thing about me. Do they have a legal right to know people? So I would appreciate if y'all would learn the law learn about the Constitution before you comment in the comment section on mine or anyone's videos. Know what the fuck you're talking about because it's better to keep your mouth shut and let people think that you're a fool than to open your mouth and prove them right. One thing about me is I will not speak on something if I have not researched it, if I don't know it to be factual and very true because I live on the truth and I stand on the truth. You can ask anyone that knows me personally. Um... I spent almost 30 years of my life in prison, okay? Because of bad choices that I made, my choice. And when I got caught from my bad choices, I owned up to it. I didn't rat nobody out to get off my time. I didn't set nobody up and go buy drugs to get off my crime like a lot of bitches out here. I took my time. I didn't cry and I didn't blame my mom and dad. I didn't blame the schools. I didn't blame all the therapy I went through as a kid. I didn't blame none of that shit. I blamed myself. From the very beginning, I always said it was me, I did it, and I was proud of it. Because at that time in my life, that's what that was my life. 
and I was proud to be an outlaw. I was proud to be a criminal, and I was a goddamn good one, even though I got caught. I didn't care about getting caught. Think about the shit they didn't catch me about, people. Y'all might want to think about that. Um, but like I said, I did almost 30 years combined in prison. I just got off paper February of this year, and I've been sober two years. Um, when I got out of prison in 2017, I was briefly homeless for a few years. <laughs> um, my then girlfriend and I met with a very tragic night in 2020, October uh, 10th of 2020. My then girlfriend and I encountered an individual who he seemed to have had a problem with us. He proceeded to follow us as we left the store on our bicycles. He ran her over and pinned her underneath the fucking car. I was able to stop the vehicle because I ran my bike into a parked car and jumped off and ran at his car because I heard the crunch and her screaming. I had two 36-inch fighting sticks that uh, I'm very skilled at, and I was attempting to kill him through his window, and he got a hold of one of my sticks. We fought briefly. He got out of his car. I tripped over my bike that I had rammed into a parked car. When I did so, he took my 36-inch fighting stick, ash wood, that I would compare to baseball bats, and he commenced to beating the hell out of me. He broke my arm, spiral fractured my arm, broke my wrist, shattered my, or broke my elbow, shattered my wrist, broke my elbow, spiral fractured my forearm. He split my head open. I don't know if y'all can see that. He split my fucking dome open right there. This is a four-inch fucking gash. Let me get that again, just in case y'all didn't get that, because I can't see what I'm looking at. Um, he was distracted and I was able to get away from him to where I could get behind the car. And as he got to his car, I was begging him to please let me get her. He got in the car and he drove away, drove to a stop sign of 20 feet away or so. And he stopped and I staggered over to him and I was begging him, please let me get her. She's underneath. And he got out of his car and he fucking looked underneath. He looked back at me and he said, yeah, she's still underneath it. And he got in the car and he drove off down Delta Road with her. He drove her 900 fucking feet underneath his car. After I ran to 7 Eleven, so I'm called 911, bleeding all over the place. I staggered down the road because I saw flashing lights down there. And then I saw something in the road. I ran. And when I got there, she was face down. The backpack was over her head. So I pulled out the backpack. You know, they say you got to have air and everything, you know, so I pulled it off so she could breathe. And that's when I noticed that it was after her head was ground down to the brainstem. And I still listened for a fucking heartbeat. And that's when the cavalry showed up. They got the guy a year later, Jeremy Dwayne Jones. He's in Bent County, Colorado. He's doing 32 years, second degree murder. Should have been first, but it is what it is. Um, that sent me on a spiral down into hell. A drug fueled spiral. I was standing on the railroad tracks two years ago. Two years ago to this day, yesterday. And I was looking down the tracks at a train coming down the fucking railroad train or tracks. I was going to step out in front of it because I was done. I'd hit bottom. I'd hit below bottom. And my wonderful fiance, Lindsay, this beautiful woman right there. She sat there, and I'd known her before me and my first girlfriend, my other girlfriend got together. I knew her. I met her. And apparently I did something to her. I made her feel a certain kind of way, and she held on to that all those years. And then when I needed that woman, she reached out to me for some reason and saved my life. Uh, I got sober the day I got with her two years ago yesterday. Now I'm off the dope. Uh, I smoke the fuck out of weed. That's it. I'm a working man now. I'm Flaggers Inc. I'm traffic control. Um, I turned my life around. I got it off paper. And the reason I filmed the police is because I uh, I was held accountable all those years that I was a criminal. Over 40 years I've been in the legal system. Over 40 years. 30 of it inside of prison. Uh being involved with law enforcement and dealing with them and fucking with them and running from them and everything uh, 40 years probably until I'm 53 now um, but the reason I filmed the police and I'm so passionate about 
what you guys call, you know, I'm overreacting or I uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. I spent almost three years in prison, like I said. I spent all that time studying people. I didn't spend that time in prison, you know, being one of the fellas and, you know, fucking raising ruckus. And, I mean, yeah, I was raising ruckus. I, I mean, I did all the prison shit or whatever the fuck who gives a fuck. But the bottom line is, all my time that I had, my time, a lot of time by myself, did a lot of whole time, a lot of solitary time, uh, uh, ad sag time, you know. Uh, I did a lot of studying. I studied religion. I studied law and I studied politics. And I just studied fucking life, man, because that's all I had to do for damn near three decades, you know. So when people tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about or that uh, I, I'm just making shit up as I go down the street, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, whoever sees this, I'm pretty sure you'll know who the fuck you are. Uh, trolls smell out their own. Um I hold them accountable now because I was held accountable people and I held myself accountable when I got all, did all my crimes. And I just so you know, I did all my crimes against people in the drug world, the outlaw world. I didn't fuck with people in society. I didn't fuck with your mom and dad. I didn't fuck with the, the mom and pop stores. You know, I didn't fuck with the, you know, the people of the world, you know, the people make the world. I, I fucked with the people that were in the drug world. If you want to be an outlaw, if you want to be a criminal, if you want to do drugs and be an idiot, well, you're in my fucking world. And so those were my crimes were committed. Those were my stabbings happened, my robberies, all that shit. Okay. Um, but I never cried. I never complained. I never ratted. I held mine. I did my, I did most of my time. I just, my last piece was an eight and a half. I did eight. The one before that was four. I did three eleven on it. The one before that was two. I did 23 months on it. Okay, so just keep going all the time. I got nine felony convictions. Y'all do the math. Bottom line is, I'm going to hold them accountable because I was held accountable by my own actions. And I accepted that and I grew by it and I learned by it. And I have a seven-year-old son now. And it's imperative that I teach him his rights and I teach him uh, morals and I teach him integrity and I teach him honor and I teach him truth and I teach him all the things that he needs to know in life to be a good man, a better man than I've ever been or ever will be. And that's my dream. And the cops are going to be held accountable, people, because they work for us. I'm a taxpayer. I'm sure y'all are taxpayers. And so they work for us. And so there's policies in place and there's laws in place. And they must abide by those policies and those laws as our employees. It's simple. If you're at your job, okay, if you're at your job, and you fuck up, you uh, do something against the policy of that company, what happens to you? What happens? If you get caught, what happens to you? You get a fucking write-up, right? Or you may get suspended. Or worst case scenario, you get your ass canned, okay? Because you violated a policy. So now if I go up to an officer, <clears throat> if I go up to an officer who's policy states that upon a citizen's request an officer shall give his full name or his name his rank his job description slash duties and in a lot of places a lot of policies in the springs it is a policy if you ask them for the call number the call service number or the incident number, or the, whatever, you know, the, the terminology they use wherever you're at, uh, they must provide that. And I have many cards. Guys, I have cards out the fucking ass. These are all fucking CSPD fucking cards. These are all fucking cops. Matthew Springs. Let's see. Two bounty hunters that I ran out of motherfucking uh, 7-Eleven parking lot in 19th and Uena. Okay, I ran him and his partner and six other cops, CSPD cops, out of the 7-Eleven parking lot. Um, they're no longer allowed in that parking lot or that 7-Eleven. Uh, Ask the owner. But I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know the law. Y'all might want to think twice before you bash someone that you don't know who they are. I have a lot more knowledge than most people can ever possess in a lifetime. And I'm humble about that fact. I'm not arrogant about it. I don't go around and boast the fact that I'm smarter than most of you. And if that's insulting, so fucking be it. I don't care. 
I am what I am. I am who I am. And I'm not going to change. I'm not going to care if I offend someone. I'm not going to care if someone doesn't like what I say. If you don't like what I say, don't fucking listen to me. It's that simple, people. I'm tired of all this bullshit. I'm tired of auditors and cop watchers having beef with each other. I'm tired of fucking uh, people calling out other people over past fucking bullshit. Okay, if that's the case, y'all start calling me out on all my fucking felonies and all my fucking jackings and all my fucking robberies and all the people I've stabbed. Okay, documented stabbings. Okay? Once you start calling me on that, what a piece of shit I was. And I'm still a piece of shit because of that. No, nah, y'all are the pieces of shit for thinking that if that's what you think. I'm not going to stop doing what I do, people. I don't give a fuck if I had no subscribers because I have a history with the cops in CSPD, San Francisco, where I'm from, and other places I've lived in this world. And I used to taunt the cops without a camera. I used to do the exact same things I'm doing now, the same things that other auditors are doing now. I was doing 20... 30 fucking years ago, guys. Without a camera. Telling cops they're not going to get my fucking ID because I didn't commit a crime. Because I already knew this. I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing because I'm doing it so people will learn their rights. So people know their rights. So people can use their rights. You see that flag right there behind me, people? Those are the only fucking colors that belong on the American flag right there. In the order that they're placed. You see those fucking stars? Those beautiful stars right there? And you see that blue? The only blue that is in that flag is right there, people, in that little spot right there, guys. Okay? Do you see the next line that comes down after that blue? section with the stars what's the color right there people what is that now if y'all are colorblind I'm not insulting you and I'm not trying to be downgrading sorry if you can't see colors that would really suck I can't imagine a life without that but for those of you that do know colors what color is that hmm? that's a white stripe for those of you who can't see it or maybe for some of those of you who are visually impaired which again I'm, I, I'm sorry I'm not making fun of that but that's a white stripe right there. And then the next one is red, white, red, white, red, white. You all see that? Well, oh, I have one next to white. My bad. The blind's right there. If you all look at the video, it kind of looks like there might be right there. Okay? My bad. Going off the visual off the video. Anyway, that's the only fucking colors and the only arrangement that that flag deserves. People, y'all have seen my profile picture. Y'all have seen my shirt, Corrupted Rattle Watch, with the blue line flag peeling and the swastika flag underneath. Let me explain that to you. Others have tried to explain it, but maybe I'll get through to somebody, whereas others may not. That blue line flag represents Nazi Germany, 1944, 1943, 1942. Keep going. Where... My mother was 12 years old in 1943. My mother told me horrific stories that she witnessed growing up there in Nazi-controlled Germany. The, the Nazis thought that they had the total power and the total right the right, not the Reich, the right to be able to stop citizens in Germany, in the state of Germany. It wasn't a country, it was a state originally. The state of Germany, Gestapo, Nazi fucks, thought that they could stop any citizen on the street that they thought was a Jew. That was their crime for being a Jew. And that's not a crime, people. That's not a crime. Never could understand that, that way of thinking, but that was their crime, was being a Jew. And so, based on that, the law enforcement of Nazi Germany 
who flew under a swastika flag would stop citizens with no crime committed, would stop citizens and detain them with no crime, would search them with no crime, would arrest them for no crime, would take their property for no crime other than being Jew, which I've said isn't a crime. But that is what they did over there, flying under the swastika flag. Stop a citizen, ID a citizen, detain a citizen, arrest a citizen, search a citizen, arrest a citizen. Okay? That's 1940s. Nazi Germany, guys. For those of you who don't know history or weren't listening earlier and just caught on this part. Now, let's flash forward to 2023. I'm not even going to go further back decades, but we could. But we're going to speak about here and now because we're here and now. 2023, law enforcement in America flying under that beautiful flag right there, people. Okay, that flag right there. Not the swastika flag. Do you see a swastika in that? Is there a swastika anywhere in that? Anyone? I dare you to find one. Okay? There's not. Now, the officers who fly under this flag, the law enforcement that fly under this flag, have distorted this flag, just as Hitler distorted the swastika, which is an Indian peace symbol. It's actually turned around, and it represents peace. Not what Hitler made it. He turned it around and made it the sickle of death. Now, law enforcement in this country have done something very similar. They have taken this sacred flag right here, the flag that many have died and bled for and given their lives for, okay, given their families for, everything. This flag right here, this color, these colors. And law enforcement has taken that stripe right there, that white stripe right there. And they replaced it with a blue fucking stripe. Okay? To honor their brothers and sisters that are following. They make your own fucking flag. Because I'm pretty sure the people who died under that fucking flag didn't die when they had a blue line in it. And if they did, they didn't die for our freedoms. They were dying for their own ignorance. But law enforcement has taken and perverted this flag as well. This symbol as well. And citizens or cops in this country now will stop a citizen, ID a citizen, detain a citizen, search a citizen, arrest a citizen, all with no crime being committed. There's hundreds of thousands of videos out there, guys, of no crimes being committed. Yet every single one of those five things I just mentioned were all done to those people. So this video is getting really long, so I'm going to cut this one short. I think I've said enough for y'all to digest it at once. At least I hope y'all can. Guys, <clears throat> before you speak, know what you're speaking about. That way you can stand on it. Because if the truth can be, if something can be destroyed by the truth, it deserves to be destroyed by the truth. And if you speak falsely on me or anything about what I do or anything anyone else does, for that matter, I'm going to speak on it and I'm going to break you down. Because the truth will prevail. Always stand on the truth, people. Know your rights. Learn your rights. Use your rights. Or you're going to fucking lose your rights. It's that simple, people. Always film the police. It's Corrupted Rado Watch. Fuck the blue line flag. Adam Lindsay, you're my life. I love you guys.